Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday morning. Isn't it great to see the sun shining out there today? Um, we are going to do some painting this morning. I'm going to do two projects for you. I've been dying to paint this little woody wagon, and here it is. I know it looks like Halloween with my black ceramic pieces, but that's how I'm going to start them. Um, you guys all saw me do the truck. It's very similar technique, same with the gnome tree. I like to start with a dark background and then just dry brush colors on, and it makes it so much easier than trying to paint every little detail and every little nook and cranny. You can dry brush your colors on. Morning, Carol. Um, thanks for watching. So let me know if you are watching, people, and where you're watching from, and if you want to paint some ceramics. I'm going to do the woody wagon now at 10. It really won't take long now that the base coating is all done. And then at 10.30, I'm going to do, I am dying to do this huge gnome Christmas tree. So we're going to do both those pieces. What I'll do is I'll go through this one, then I'm going to sign off, and then I'm going to pop back on with the other piece so that I'll have two videos that I can send to people as they purchase their pieces. When you purchase a ceramic piece, I will deliver or ship it. It also comes with a QR code that will bring you back to this video. It will have a supply list um, and anything you need. I kind of just go over my supplies as I go. I'm not really particular. I use acrylic paints. You can use the little um, acrylic paints, the two ounces that you always find in the craft stores. If you have tubes, you can use those. I'm not really too fussy. Um, some of the colors don't have as much pigment in them, the lesser expensive brands, but you could still use them. And if you had to do a second coat, you can certainly do that. Um, hi, Daryl. Wish I was in Florida. Hi, Doreen. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I'm going to go along and paint this. There'll also be um, a supply list coming up. So if you don't catch what I'm using, please, I have the supply list. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments. I'm not sure um, I can answer as I go, but I will try. I'm going to add some people here. I've never had to add people to your live before, but I'm trying. Any questions, any concerns? If you can't see what I'm doing and the angle for the camera is not great, let me know. I'll change that up as I go. Um, and, the, and I'd like you to see the palette, so I hope you can kind of see that a little bit. But let's get started and we can chat as I go. And I will glance up and try to get some, um, if you have any questions and whatnot. But anyways, direct message me or, or private message me any, any questions. I'll always answer. And after the video's over, I'm going to go back and I'll keep on uh, answering things you might have commented here and um, addressing those things as time goes on. So you can, even though we're doing this live now, anytime you put on a um, question, I'll answer it for you. Okay, so I think I'm doing this one red. Everyone loves the red. Lots of people did the red trucks. Um, I love my teal, and some people did teal, but this um, is going to be in red. Sorry about that. Okay, so what I do when I'm doing the dry brushing technique is I start with a darker color and I work lighter. Since this guy's going to be red, I'm going to do the red areas with, and I like to use a bristly brush, something that's a little more body to it. If you had one of your nice soft sable brushes and you were trying to dry brush, you wouldn't get the same effect. So sometimes the more inexpensive the brush, the better. And I should mention, to, to paint these originally, I just black paint of, uh, coat of black paint on the whole thing. I use these big chip brushes, which I've showed you before. They're super cheap. They can get them at Michael's. I get them at the dollar store in like two or three in a pack. I just use the black paint and do the whole piece, let it dry. I thought I'd save us time this morning um, by getting that done beforehand because that's very easy to do. So I'm going to look at the areas that I want to have um, red on this. And what I've got is just a maroon and a bright red there. When I dry brush, I take just a little bit of paint to the side, wipe off most of the color, and then I just go right on and just lightly do a light coat of where you want that red. I'm going to move the camera a little bit so you can see more of that than me. And again, I'll try to get that so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to keep going back and loading my brush, and I'm just going to grab some of that maroon paint. I'm going to do it where I want. I'm going around the little wood area here. And I'm just doing where the color would be on the body of the truck. And to be honest, a lot of these old woodies had a black roof. So I think I'm going to keep the roof black. I'm just going to bring the color up to there. And I'm kind of looking at my picture here as I go, just to get an idea where I want that color. I just go I, I googled some uh, old woody wagons. I googled some old images. 
and I'm just kind of using those as a guide. So I have those on my computer here. I'll glance over at that every now and again. We have been, uh, everyone's been loving the trees. We're still selling the trees. We have that video. If you're on my page, you could go back and find all the videos. The truck with the tree was nice. People are, actually I've sold out pretty much of the gnome Christmas tree, but I'm gonna have more of those in, hopefully next week. So I'm gonna paint him up, and if you're interested in one, just let me know and I'll get one of those for you. A lot of people are ordering um, multiples of the pieces and they're going to paint together on Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving weekend, which I think is kind of a nice family, family time. You can work a little fast, rather fast on these guys when you're doing the dry brushing technique. So what I'm gonna do is the red and the red spots, just in these little nooks and cranny. I'm gonna kinda of go along a little quickly this morning because there's nothing worse than watching paint dry <laughs> for you guys. But it's kinda of nice to get a visual. So I'm gonna kinda of go along with a quick lesson. And I think I'm going to do the wood tone all here. So now we just need the bumper here in the, in the red. There we go. And actually, I'm thinking about what I said about going off live and then back again for the gnome. I think I'll stay on live. While my phone is, I have it do not disturb, but I hope it's not bugging you guys on your end. That keeps going off. Okay, so I think I will stay live and do both pieces because I can edit it next time because I just want to have it for the people that need just instruction on one piece or the other to have that, but I can do that in the editing. I've been becoming quite a video editor these days. And I appreciate you guys watching and share it with your friends. Let me know you're watching. Let me know where you're from. Let me know what you have for memories of painting these ceramic pieces back in the day. The best part about this is people sharing, oh, my grandmother painted the trees and at Christmas we would all put the lights in and that was our tradition every year. And the mom going to the corner ceramic shop, you guys all know that I grew up in my mother's ceramic shop and we painted these things and uh, hadn't thought about them in a long while. So it's really cool to have, um, have them back. It brings back a lot of memories for me too. All right, I'm not being as careful as I could, but I can touch it up and I just kind of want to get you guys the idea. So this just a quick base coat and you can see how the maroon on the um, black really blends in and that's the look I want. This is kind of an old antique -y kind of thing. I want that look and it's pretty much dry where I started. So what I would do for my second coat and you may build it up as much as you like and have it as bright. It doesn't have to be dull and antique look and you just put more coats of paint on. That would be great. So now I just go into the brighter. I'm not even washing my brush off. I'm just drying off the darker color, putting on a little of the bright red right on top. And I can get as bright as I want. It's going to dry a little duller, but I rather control it by putting on a little bit at a time than too much paint on my brush. And then how do you get it off? It's kind of a pain. i rather do it light. And I like the look of the antique old truck. And feel free to use other colors. I mean, this would be so fun in the teal again. Those woodies came in some cool colors. You can um, even use your imagination. Use the colors of your team mascot. Do an orange one. Do I think they would be great fun to do them that way. And then you can even add on a little... Patriots logo or a little one of your team mascots. I know the last time we did the truck, um, someone mentioned doing, and I forget, Clemson? Yeah, the orange with the little logo on the doors. Be awful cute. All right. So how many people like this look? Do they like, the, do you like the look of the dry brushing? And um, instead of painting with your little detail brush, every little bit and every little nook and cranny, when I'm hitting the highlights of this sculptured piece, little pieces aren't painted underneath and in, but I like I like the way that looks. It gives it a little shadow. It, it's kind of cool. It's, it's my favorite way. I'm going to do some more pieces like this, um, which I'll show you in a little bit. I will show you some of the new pieces. I have a really fun surprise that 
and you might see it, you can't see it on your screen, that will go with the tree, uh, the truck and tree and this little woody wagon. It's a little companion piece that I am so excited to show you guys, but I'm gonna wait till I get a little painting done here. There, so you can see, I'm not being too careful. I'm just kind of getting that little bit of red on there. I think I'll let that dry a bit. I told you I'm gonna keep the top black. And at the end, I'm gonna give it a nice little spray, a nice gloss spray. And that will brighten up these colors a little more. I will throw my brush in the water now. I don't want to leave my brush drying here. Hi, Karen. Hi, Nance. Hi, Marilyn. Um, thank you guys for watching. I don't I want the paint to harden in my brushes because you'll get it all up in the ferrules and it will. you'll lose your uh, bristles. And you want to treat your brushes with care and take care of them because they will last you a long, long time if you do that. Okay, so I'm going to rinse that one off. The only thing on the dry brush technique is really make sure that your brushes are good and dry um, when you go to your next color. So I just squeeze the water out, make sure it's a nice dry brush again. And I'm gonna work on my tree. So I've got some tree colors here. This is my gnome palette, but we have the green there. If you remember when we painted the big ceramic Christmas tree, get that out of there. I started with, a few, um, with the black, uh, actually a dark, dark green. So I did the dark green for the tree almost black. So this time I said, I'm going to try it and see how it comes out with just using the black as the base. And then I'm going to go through a few shades of green, letting it dry in between, but I'll just take a little of that brighter green and I kind of just brush it in the direction that those branches are going. And you can see it does show the black in the crevices and we kind of want that look. We want it to look textured. These pieces have such great detail on them that when you do the dry brush again, you have those crevices left dark. It gives you a really cool look without really trying. I know I missed some of the black there and there's some white showing, but no big deal. That can always be touched up. I'm gonna fly along fairly quickly to make this more fun to watch. And I will touch up some bits later. Can you believe we're almost in the middle of November? I am shocked. I cannot believe we're thinking that Thanksgiving is so close. I don't know where the month went. I don't know where the summer went during these crazy times. I don't want to say it's good that time is passing quickly, but it's just hard to believe. I've got lots of people holiday shopping. You guys might know that my Tinker's Cart art page is my art stuff, but I also have the Tinker's Cart, which is um, Irish imports. And we're gearing up, of course, for our big season now. And uh, we all are a little nervous as how this shopping season is going to go, but we are open at the Worcester Public Market, and we've people are people are Christmas shopping already quite a bit. I think they're probably a little unsure of how things are going to go, and for us, that's good to get an early start. So, I've got one coat of the bright green. It's drying pretty quickly, so I'm going to just go right ahead with this, and I think it's more of a leaf green, kind of not army green, but kind of a leaf green. I'm doing the same thing. I'm just going to highlight here and there just to give me a little dimension a little bit of light a little bit of dark it's not super noticeable but it gives it a nice look don't don't you think um i kind of like the way it's just some little different shades there i'm going to let that dry because when i put on this really light apple green i kind of want it to really pop on the edges of the branches so i am going to let that dry a minute I'm gonna get a little brown because I forgot this is the only Christmas tree we have that has a little, little um, I wanna say stem, it's not a stem, trunk. So we're just gonna quickly, and can you see how you can quickly just get a little color on there and it does it, it does the trick? There, perfect. The windows, I just go in with kind of a light blue, maybe a little white on top um, for the windows. So let me grab a light blue. I meant to have all my colors kind of ready, but I guess I forgot this one. And then the tires are black, so they stay black. We're gonna dry brush on some silver for the rims and um, the bumpers and the grill. And I know I talked a lot last time about the paints. I use a variety of brands. There's folk art, there's deco art, there's Americana, there's, well, Apple Barrel, I think you get at Walmart for 50 cents. Uh, there's, a, it, there, there's Quite a range and the prices are on any of them are pretty good so I would um, 
I would just use what you have if you have something. If anyone has trouble, I know paints are hard to find at Michael's now, um, but if anyone's having trouble at all finding paint, please just send me a message or let me know because I can put together a paint kit if you need it. If you need brushes and, a, and some paint, when I drop off your piece, I'd be happy to uh, put a little kit together for you. So no worries there. Just a light blue. Just And I don't want to go and paint the windows all in. I want to just kind of just give them a little highlight. That is looking a lot like white, so I may not even add white. I'm just going into the windows. And you can see there's the little slits here. That's where the light will shine through. And we're going to put the little lights in the tree, too. So when we light it up, it's going to be pretty awesome. I'm taking little bits of paint, drying my brush off, just lightly. I'm not using any pressure. I want to go light. I would rather go so light you could barely see it and then do it a couple more times than go heavy-handed, a big loaded brush. Really have just a tiniest bit of paint on your brush. There. That's all you need for the windows. If you wanted to do a little bit of white, I'll just show you what that'll look like if you wanted to have it more like a little highlight, say, same brush. Again, I'm not. I'm only washing my brushes off really when I need to go to a lighter color. I'm going to pull a little of that white aside and just kind of like a little reflection. And actually, I kind of like the way that looks. And do you know what I grabbed? I, gla I grabbed um, like a glitter paint, but I kind of like it. It's, it's a pearly, glittery paint. And I think for Christmas, and since this is going to light up, we can have a little sparkle. That's fine. Now, I'm going to get the silver on there. And then we're going to go and do the little wood trim. I had thought about doing wood trim the darker wood in here, which is like what the woodies look like a lot. But I got some cute, um, I saw one that had like a buffalo plaid painted here. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet with that, but let's get the silver on and then we'll decide. Let me get another brush here. All right. So it's just a metallic silver acrylic paint, just like the little two ounce paints I was showing you. And I'm going to just go in and do... I'm going to do the hubcaps there silver. I think I'll take a liner brush after with white and do that little white rim. So it just gives it a little more something, something. So you guys are mostly used to me painting canvases and paint nights and all that business, which with the, um, the times we're living in, I don't have too many in-person classes. I've done some virtual ones. I will schedule some more virtual. I, I'll get back to the canvas painting, too. The ceramics kind of came and took over, and they're great for the holidays. So I thought, let's run with it for now, and then I will get some snowmen and some Christmas paintings done. Some uh, wood signs I'm working on. I've got some cool kits that I'm putting together, so it will include the piece and the paints and everything you need. Um, I've got them for kids. I don't know if you saw the kids' kits I put together. So that's something that might be uh, something for the kids to do over school vacation and whatnot. While I'm at it, I'm gonna just put those little door handles there. You know what I think I will do? Instead of painting the middle of the doors white and do the buffalo plaid, I think I'm going to do the wood edges and maybe just like a little white plaid, kind of buffalo plaid with the white check on the door since there's black already there that might be a fun thing okay i'm going to get a little bigger brush to do the um to do the grills with there we go the bumper and the grill is all and i hope you guys can see me please let me know in the comments if if, if another angle is better when going forward i can uh, try to address that I make these videos and then I'm sort of afraid to watch them because I don't want to listen to the sound of my voice. Um, but you guys are great for uh, putting up with that. Sound like Minnie Mouse. All right. How many of you guys have painted with me in person? We, have, we are doing lots of paint nights. Actually, I have an in-person uh, class after this today at noon um, locally for some ceramics just for a, a small private event. I've got a few of those booked. If it's something you'd like to do, we could certainly talk about that as well. Just a small group, um, everybody masked up, and we keep our distance. And it's been nice to get out just a little bit and see people and do some painting. All right. Okay. So there is the silver bits. 
I'm going to go back and get that little bit of green on that tree. And I also have the snow text if you like to add that little snow look on the top, which is kind of fun. The light green, just a tiny bit. I sort of kind of just go from the tips of each little branch in. So I'm feathering that paint. It's kind of feathering by itself. I take a little paint, I pull it towards me. And so mostly what you see that green on is the very ends of the branches, which is where we'll put the snow after. So it's, it's looking pretty green, but then we're gonna put a little snow on and it's gonna really pop. It's gonna be cute. Okay, so trees, that's good enough for that. I'm gonna go in and do the little wood bits. which I need a smaller brush for. And I didn't really find a color that I loved, so I'm gonna just kind of mix a little of this gold with some ivory. I do mix a lot of colors, and I'll start giving you some tips on that too in some of the upcoming videos. And these are just the little outlines. And you know what's nice is the truck is dimensional, and it, and it almost you know makes it very easy for you to paint these little lines because it's not like you have to guess where is the line. You're just following that little, you're just following that little line that's already there. And again, you won't be trying to paint this in a half an hour and you can take your time. And I know I'm getting a little messy, but everything can be touched up with the acrylic paints, which is kind of cool. I might just do the one side so that you can see how it's done and then I can do the other because I want to kind of try that. I'm curious about that plaid look there so I want to try that and keep in mind when I do it you might want to paint these squares red and do the black buffalo plaid uh, which is still so popular you know on clothing and gift decor gift items home decor you know that uh, red and black buffalo plaid I'm talking about. What's everybody got planned for Thanksgiving? I know it's kind of an odd year and odd for the holidays, and uh, I think there'll be a lot more Zoom meals, I guess, and whatnot. But we can still have our turkey and fixings, right? Okay, so you get the idea. That is the trim. I think my little step side is going to stay black. I'm going to show you this side. So let's put the little white wall um, in the tires and I'm not going to use glitter again I will actually use white paint I think this would look really cute with the piece I'll show you later and the big tree behind it as a little um, a little setup for Christmas I think that would be kind of fun okay again even for something as little as the detail of these little white walls just taking the let paint lightly on my brush and again, the line is there. You can kind of just brace your hand somewhere and just follow that. And it's just light and it doesn't have to be perfect because if it was perfect, it would look like it came from a factory. And you want it to have some personality. So you've got your little white wall there. So see what we did on this side is we did the little trim. Again, a small round brush for that works great. This is, would be a nice little... Um, Nice little uh, point on that, so that always helps That if your brush isn't fraying all over the place. But if you keep um, them clean with some dish, dish soap after you paint is always a good idea. Clean them out. And that's that side. I would go and do a little silver on my headlight. There's a little, little light here. And these are all cut out. So this is where your light's going to shine through, which I will plug this in afterwards and I will show you. So there we are. You got an idea. We'll do um, your white on there as well and your other side the same. But I do want to try because if I get this white paint and, and this brush, I'm sort of flattening it out. So I'm going to get a nice, a little wider line. I'm going to thin it down a tiny bit. I want the paint translucent for this so that when the two, the plaid over the, the stripes overlap, you get that little darker area. I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants here because I just, before I came on, saw a picture of one with a little buffalo plaid here, so I thought it was kind of cool. So I am just going to go and make my stripes, keeping my paint a little thinner than that even because when you put it on, you can kind of see if you're going to, and I want it to be a little see-through. 
that's a little better there you can kind of see through it and I'm going to give that a second to dry because when I go over I'm hoping I get a little bit of a darker area on, on some of them and I may even I have a nice I don't know if you saw me paint the Balik tree the other day I have a nice tiny square brush which works nice actually for a stripe let me kind of use that one for the second go round. Again, I take just a tiniest bit of water on my brush into my white paint. I pull it aside so that I can kind of use the thinner paint that's over here. This is like a little square brush. Let's try that. Then you won't get those thin lines at the bottom there. And now I'm just going to go and make my stripes this way. Maybe don't even need that last one. But it's kind of cute with the little buffalo plaid in there. I'm going to do one more so you can see it, but then I want to put some snow on that tree and show you how we finish up this guy. And, and I would go and do my little silver here. The back window's done the same way. You're going to put your windows in and then your wood, and then I would do either the buffalo plaid across the back, which would be cool, or you could write your name, somebody's tree farm, a cool place for a little logo, a little sports logo, or company logo. Company logos would be cute. These little trucks with your company logo as gifts for people, um, your employees even. How fun would that be? Or to put up in your office at work. So many ideas. And after we're done, I'll finish this off properly and show you some pictures of all the sides. So let me just quickly do one more little plaid for you so you can get the idea. So again, I'm just going to go keeping the paint thin. It's pretty thin, so it's drying pretty fast. And then you're just going to go right the other way. So, anyways, I kind of like the plaid. I don't think um, I would maybe need as many stripes, but anyway, that's that. Let me show you. If you wish, you can use the snow text, which is just made by Deco Art. You can find it at Michael's. Um, you can also find all this on at Amazon if you need to, too. And what it is, is it's globby and bumpy and looks like snow. And I tried putting it on with a palette knife. I've tried putting it on with a brush. I didn't love it. So I just use my finger and it seems to go even better. And I'm just putting it on the tips of the branches. It adds some texture. Now, if I was um, not doing this on this video so I could get you to see how I made, how I put everything together, I would probably have finished my painting on my truck, taken it outside and sprayed a gloss spray if you want it glossy you can also get a satin spray you can get a pearl spray you you could leave it by itself the finish is pretty um sealed you don't really have to put something on it but i like to shine it up a little bit and i use um, a mod podge high shine gloss other companies make it you could get aileen's um krylon you just want to take it outside and do it and give it a nice light spray and let it dry and you can do it again if you want to get a little more um, of a sealer on there. It just gives it a little shine and like I said I would do that and then put your snow on. So you can kind of see that I'm not putting it over everything and again you may do whatever you like because I am not your boss. You can put it all over the whole tree if you want. I'm just putting it on the ends and I'm just going to get a little snow out of that little hole where the light's going to go after it. So we're just going to scoop that out. Okay. So you can see the snow. I just can kind of pat it on with my finger. Give it a try with um, whatever method you want to use, too. You could try a palette knife. Um, and on my big tree, I, I, I opted to not do the snow because I, I like the way the white paint looked. And I could show you what I did there. And you could try it. If you don't want to invest in a little thing of snow... I kind of like the way it looked when I just took white paint on my brush and I just went on the end, the tip of the uh, branch, and just kind of feathered the paint in. I like that look too. It's up to you. You could try either, but if you have white paint, you don't want to go looking for the snow text. That way works. If you need snow text and you can't find it or paints too, remember, I'll make up a little kit. Um, I want you guys to see this, but I feel like I'm kind of ducking in here all the time. So... I did it kind of quick, but you get the idea. I will finish it and show you guys how it looks done. But let's take a look at what it's going to look like with the light in it, which would be kind of cool. And then we'll work on the gnome because it is oh one minute to spare. I um, didn't know how long it would take, but I figured a half an hour. Okay, 
So the little lights, you come, this comes with the light kit. It comes with the switch, which is great, so you don't have to be unplugging it. You can turn it off and on by the switch. This little metal piece fits right in the bottom. And you can see it has, I usually stretch them out a bit to get them to pop in. And then your cord, you know, can hide underneath there. And the best part is, of course, the lights. Ooh. So you get the idea. Um, you know what? It's kind of hard to see with all the bright lights here. Let me see if I can shut this off. There. Can you see it glows a little bit? So you've got your lights coming out the windows. You've got your lights on the tree. And, um, and the lights come out where the lights are supposed to be in the front and whatnot. So anyways, I just wanted to quickly light it up and give you an idea. I know it looks like it's half done, and it is half done, but you can get the idea. And I will post pictures, so don't worry about that. Here's what I am excited to show you. Da, 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 da. It needs a little camper. So this little camper, I have to show you. I'm going to paint up next week sometime. It is adorable. So with your truck and, tr well, you know, we could, let's use the finished side, the half finished side. Look at it. Would that not be the cutest thing? Can you see that? Let's see. I'm going to move it over so you can see. You could paint it up to match. Little buffalo plaid if you wanted. Snow. Um, I just think it's so cute. And it really is the right size. So, uh, so I was uh, waiting on those. And those are here. Little campers to go with your truck and tree. And with your woody station wagon. 